What's up guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency video. You are not going to want to miss this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're invested in XRP and let's dive right in. So I want to talk about the DTCC. Obviously, we know that they processed well over two quadrillion dollars in securities in 2019 and it's looking at distributed ledger technology. Now, I know many of us are well aware of this and I always laugh at these silly titles because they're looking at DLZ. If you guys really research the DTCC and are aware of the connections to the company Ripple, you'd realize that they've been exploring DLT since 2015 even 2016. So we're going to paint a little picture here. I know many of you already know all this, but it's going to lead into my additional points. So first off, I want to look at the chart really quick. So we see XRP around 59 cents. Now we're kind of looking at silver back and forth. And I remember back in March or earlier this year, everybody was talking about, you know, silver at $18 or even $14. XRP was 18 cents, etc. And look at the ROI you would have made by going with XRP over silver. Now, for full disclosure, of course, I own both. I believe that precious metals and crypto assets will do exceedingly well in the future, specifically, you know, crypto because of the fungibility aspect. But just looking at an overall ROI, we understand that every single penny counts. We can just go from right before it broke out. Let's even go to like 25 cents. And all the way up to that high wick, we could go down to, you know, 92 cents because on Coinbase, that's over 250%. And even today, it is well over 100%. Now, if we do the same thing for silver, when it broke out, or we'll even just go to the $18 as an example. So we'll just go to 18 and right to where it went, that's, you know, over 60%. That's good and great. And yeah, it beats the stock market to a degree, depending on the shares you own. But look at this, 30%. Crypto assets, guys, are nascent, meaning they are very young and have tons of underlying potential. This is the asset class that is going to process all other asset classes. This is the first asset class since the 1600s. And I know a lot of us have been preaching this for years, but we are just getting started. So understand, every single dollar counts. And why do I always talk about every single penny counts for me and my dollar costs, you know, averaging and accumulating? It's because... By the time the average person realizes what XRP is or even believes in it, it's going to be relatively too late for them. Now, whether you believe XRP will go to $100, $1,000, that's fine. But what I'm saying as an investor is I am here for an ROI and to make the most of my money and optimize the return. So for example, those of us, let's just say right now at current price, and I'm going to put this out on a weekly so I can zoom out. Actually, let's do a monthly just to really speed this guy up. So just for fun, guys. Let's say even to ten dollars, we'll be super conservative. You guys know we'll you know blow past that with ease when things get started. Whether you believe we need regulatory clarity or anything, let's say we start right at fifty cents, sixty cents, and we go to ten dollars. All right, that is fifteen hundred percent return. Now, obviously, you know we expect it to go way, way past this. I'm just using this as a conservative estimate. Now. Let's say people didn't believe in XRP until all time high of say $3.84. We'll just go to like $3.80 and go to $10, give or take. And this is just really sloppy, 162%. And we just looked at 1500%, almost a 10X difference in terms of a return. And now I understand, yes, these numbers can change if you go to $100, et cetera, but this is just a little taste. So it's very important to get in as low as you can, dollar cost average, and as I share always, because I've been here several years, I've tasted it, I've bought high I've bought low I keep cash on the side whether it's USD or USDC a stable coin because if we ever do face some corrections or consolidations whatever you want to call it and we come back down to even these you know EMAs come down to 37 cents or 40 cents or 50 cents I will just purchase some more and dollar cost average and obviously that'll lower my buy buying average from 60 cents to you know say closer to 40 or 50 cents and this is specifically for newcomers i've been in profit for quite some time just like many people and it's just so awesome to see i know james real xrp in the community we literally watched him triple his 401k and he's been at coca-cola and he put it in i trust capital absolutely insane now of course we're sitting at 60 cents can you even fathom what that would be like at ten dollars a hundred dollars etc and that's not even considering the tax advantages that James is taking advantage of with iTrust Capital. Links are in the video description. And for those of us that are looking to live off of our crypto collateralized in the future, that's all good and great. There's many services today, but right now, you know, my XRP is relatively low value in my eyes. I'm here for post moon scenario to then live off the wealth of these crypto assets. And of course, I will be holding a portion for life as I do expect it to increase substantially. But of course, Right now, early on is what's important to catch the adoption curve. All right. 
Next, so we have right here Zoe Cruz, ex-co-president at Morgan Stanley. And this is just a quote by Status, status.hr, guys. Great website to learn more about Ripple and XRP. And she goes on to say, XRP is used as a bridge currency that solves a multi-trillion dollar problem. Ripple XRP is a clear winner in this cross-border space. Now, I don't know how I feel about, you know, saying a clear winner. Now, obviously, you know, we've done well over a billion dollars in transactions via XRP, institutionally speaking. Now, that's just the very beginning. I have very, very high hopes. I didn't come here to, you know, reach all-time higher past $10 per XRP, even though that's still arguably better than the majority of returns you can find in the stock market, unless you're talking about, you know, Amazon or something like that. But... I believe, obviously, XRP is going to be a clear winner and is a clear contender right now, but we are still so early, and that is a good thing for us to take advantage of this time. All right? Right here, XRP Crypt Wolf. We have over 80,000 XRP accounts that are set up to claim the Spark Token airdrop with the total balance of 17.5 billion XRP. We can see 421 million XRP holdings increased as 36,000 new XRP accounts have been created since Flare Network's announcement. All good and great demand. I encourage everybody to show support and support this ecosystem any way they can. And how I'm treating the Spark Token spark token airdrop is i'm absolutely participating via my ledger nano and probably maybe kraken or binance.us i'm not going to be using coinbase just a personal choice um because they usually wait too long and you know all this jurisdiction talk i, I don't like how they operate and that's just my personal choice I'm not bad mouthing them to each their own but i'm choosing to support these other platforms as well that have been more engaged with the xrp community um, and we're going to be paying a close attention to this. And I, I don't really see Spark having some high value initially. And if it dumps, maybe I'll throw $500 at it and purchase it and just do a long-term hold. Just a little gamble. But nonetheless, I'm excited for this ecosystem. All right. So we'll talk about the DTCC. We're going to paint a picture really quick and go through this. So we see here the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. Remember, they were called the Fed before the Fed existed, the Federal Reserve, an enormous operation providing the vast majority of clearing and settlement. That's the keyword we want. Services for securities in the U.S. To put this in perspective, they process $2.15 quadrillion. FYI, a quadrillion is a thousand trillion. So essentially 2000 trillion plus. So yeah, you could say I'm quite bullish and even just try and do fathom, you know, point a 10th of a percent of this market. And if you guys watched my previous video, we already heard CEO Jeremy Allaire of Circle address all of this and say, just like when the commercial internet was built, this crypto, this DLT revolution is going to be the fundamental infrastructure of all of this. So yes, you could say I'm a little bullish and believe in this asset class. And even more so when you realize we're just at the tip of the iceberg, looking at the backing of these institutions, even the wealthiest groups, whether they're early or late, they're getting involved. And that is what I'm watching. All right. For fintechs, digital innovation, you know, DTCC is a key partner in the transformation process. We'll keep an eye on this. And of course, the inflection point of technology, all good and great. And of course, Project Ion and Whitney, I encourage all of you guys to read these papers, learn more about it if you are new, all right? So of course, we know right here, back in 2016, announcing Ripple's Global Payment Steering Group. This is GPSG. 2016, Marcus Treacher. Of course, he's of Ripple. He's, you know, he was on the board of Swift. He was at HSBC for years, another huge bank. And of course, it's RippleNet. No surprise. And I have so many more connections just to talk about in this video. Um, I should probably break it into two, but oh well. Anybody that has the attention span to stick with me, props, all right? Because again, it is good to level up your knowledge while we wait. What am I doing? And if I'm not buying XRP, I'm sharpening my sword. I'm, you know, expanding my awareness of all of this and planning. All right. So we see here today, Ripple is proud to announce the creation of the first interbank group for global payments. Not now words mean, th mean things, guys. Global. This is, you know, cross border international. It's not just partially global. Just like when Ripple says we are here to create the Internet of value. It's not the Internet of small value. Notice on distributed financial technology, Bank of America, Santander, Unicredit, Standard Chartered, Westpac, Royal Bank of Canada, etc. They're all the founding members of this initiative. Global Payment Steering Group to make Ripple, RippleNet, the standard. Now, this is beyond just settlements. Notice right here, this group will oversee the creation and maintenance of Ripple payment transaction rules, formalized standards for activity using Ripple, and other actions to promote implementation of Ripple payment capabilities as our network continues to grow. Now, 
if you have truly done your research and you know XRP, you know Chris Larson, you've watched all of the old videos of 2015, 2016, you'd understand that when they say Ripple, they're essentially just referring to the whole suite of software. So yes, you can include Interledger Protocol, you can include X Current, you can include XRP usage with on-demand liquidity, all right? GPSG, the world's only blockchain bankers network with defined rules and governance. It just sounds like the ISO 222 standards as well. Funny enough, we have Ripple recently, like months ago, join the government body or the standards body for ISO, and they're the only DLT-focused group. So yeah, you could say it really does look like this has all been planned all along, all the world's a stage, and now we're just waiting for all of this to roll out. They can give their narrative whatever excuses they want, but I know how this game ends, and I think we do, you know, we're well aware of this. It's right here. Chairman of the Global Payment Steering Group and former president and CEO of the DTCC, Don Donahue. So yeah, this is another reason. And please understand, just go watch the hundreds of videos that you know I have available and many other XRP YouTubers do, because this is what we see. And if you had, you know, probably seven days straight to get through all this information, you would understand. All right. The creation of the Global Payment Steering Group is significant because this represents the first time that major banks have formulated policies to govern the transfer of money value across borders using blockchain. I'm excited to be part of this group of forward looking leaders who are building the payments network of the future today. And now this last one, and then we'll move on. These leading banks are working with Ripple to reduce the time and cost of settlements, which also enables new types of high volume, low value global transactions. I think you guys understand what happens with increasing velocity of the network in the demand that it applies to on, you know, referring to XRP. By coming together to form the GSP, uh, GSPG, these banks are laying the foundation for a new payments network underpinned by Ripple solutions and supported by rules and governance for global settlements. Yeah, a little bullish, all right? So also, congrats to the XRP ledger. We can see right here, 60 million plus. All ledgers have been closed without issue since its inception. I remember watching it at 50 million, 55 million, and it just keeps going without a single error. Also, we have right here, and I believe uh, DJ Peter Voss shared this with me, so thank you. Spotify is staffing up for Facebook's DM other crypto payments. Now, essentially... Yes, the majority of the market is bullish. I always stay cynical and I'm prepared and, you know, expecting the unexpected at any point. I have zero doubt in this asset class. It is just a matter of time when it gets rolled out. I want it to be sooner than later. Trust me. All right. So right here, Spotify is hiring, you know, for payment roles that includes, you know, Facebook's DM. One role will also focus on potential moves with crypto, stable coins, blockchain, central bank, digital currencies. All future proofing, all interoperability. We have PayPal launching crypto, already has. We have, you know, BitGo and talks with PayPal. BitGo is backed by Goldman Sachs there years ago, even providing custody multi signature storage for XRP. Like, you can't make this up. So, yeah, I encourage everything that, you know, I encourage all of you, everything I say here, go fact check it, go look at it and see what applies today and see what fell through. It's very, very important. All right. Also, green by nature. So we have XRP was designed with sustainability in mind. Another crypto asset I like is EWT. This is the Energy Web Foundation. So we already talked about this many, many times. We have the Rocky Mountain Institute, and we also have REBA, Renewable Energy Buyers Alliance. Encourage you guys to check this out as well. And then also we have energy consumption of Portugal, for example, and this is comparing 60 million transactions in 2019. Now, something to note, we can do, let's say, 474,000 kilowatt hours, I believe, divided by Bitcoin, 29.24 billion um, I believe that was, in terms of percent, about 0.0016%. So that means, literally, the XRP ledger's energy consumption is 0.0016% of Bitcoin's total. And look, we still far outweigh or you know far um, outcompete even Ethereum in terms of energy consumption. And what groups are backed with Energy Web and all of this uh, initiative for the Sustainable Development Goals? The World Economic Forum. The 1% of the 1%. Please pay attention to this. This is just another reason why I'm paying attention to what's occurring. We already know this whole uh, you know, internet of autonomy, this internet of movement as well with uh, self-driving car, uh, self cars, excuse me. It's all connected. Hopefully, if you watched maybe the last like seven videos, this would paint a pretty decent picture for you guys. But yeah, pay close attention to this. Also, so Andrew Zell, guys, definite follow on crypto Twitter if you were there. Just talking about R3, again, we already know the lawsuit. We understand that XRP was the first settlement mechanism, etc. And 
why? Like, there's many questions. You can have your conspiracies. Whether R3, whether Ripple, whether any other groups use XRP. All I'm saying is XRP was developed for global payments. Global. And once we expand and really take over cross-border, we can expand upon other more liquid corridors like the US dollar and euro, even in the foreign exchange market, or start tackling domestic use cases. And don't get me started. If you go to the clearinghouse.org, the United States Domestic Real-Time Payment Initiative, there's several, I mean, probably what, three to five at least, that are technology providers, the core technology providers of the globe and also in the infrastructure of the United States that already are all integrated with Ripple, have done proof of concepts years ago, all right? So anyways, stick with me. We have DJ Peter Voss sharing this, and pay attention to the, you know these types of articles that are going on. Of course, they get clicks, but we just have to kind of pay close attention to this. The Ethereum, mentor, uh, mentor, mental capital agency calls XRP one of many, or one of, let's see, of one of many most intriguing property in crypto. So, you know, you're going to see all these types of interesting clickbaity articles as always but just question the motives all right now into the good stuff we have all the money this is the real lisa daily sharing this we have lloyd's bank and the united kingdom has become the first bank to switch on swift gpi instant a new service from the brussels-based interbank cooperative that enables consumers and businesses to send tracked payments in seconds across borders so we can see that swift is stepping up now who is lloyd's bank let's talk about it Right here, Lloyds Bank is the first in the world to connect to Swift GPI Instant. We're going to look at a few connections. The Go Live follows a successful pilot that took place earlier this year. And now let's pay attention to the banks that are involved here. We can see Barclays, that's RippleNet, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, RippleNet, DBS has mentioned RippleNet many times, Wells Fargo, of course, obvious connections, and BBVA, one of the biggest banks in the world, RippleNet. Interesting. All right, now we'll keep going. Right here, DBS, this is back in August 2019. Label Ripple as the cheapest way to send cross-border payments. All right, just talking about real-time growth settlement system. We can see all of this and see the options. It is a no-brainer. And even just ACH just makes me think of Nacho Alliance. And yeah, I'm, I'm very curious, is Ripple um, still part of the Nacho Alliance? Or are they you know, still working together? Or <laughs> was it just planned all along? Right here. Barclays, we already mentioned them in the previous article. We can see Ripple, Barclays Tech Accelerator, and other investors have backed a $1.7 million round for SendFriend. And I know we talked about this a while back, a new remittance startup that will use the XRP crypto to move funds internationally. And let's keep going. Right here, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia is on the verge of becoming one of the first banking institutions in the world to use Ripple Network. Now let's see the years right here. This is 2015, and we can see... Announced this week it will use Ripple technology to facilitate payments between its subsidiaries describing distributed protocols as the way of the future. They are future-proofing. This is another example, just like the DTCC with their roadmap. If you guys I shared it in an old video, um, the DTCC's DLT roadmap, 2015-2016. Yet, me and you, everyday people, because I wasn't here in 2013, unfortunately, in the crypto market. I came here you know, a little later. We understand what is at play. There were bull runs before the big late 2017 2018 bull run this has been part of the plan all along all right lloyd's bank partners with blockchain platform to streamline trade finance this is 2019 as well just old just tying it all together and we can see they've partnered with comgo or comgo to speed up international commodity trade finance all future proofing and there was something i wanted to show right here this platform is backed by 15 banks and commodity investors which include ing ripple it's like you can't make this up and yes they're all connected maybe they're all just future proofing or will xrp actually be one of the global standards never know right here ripple little fun fact guys for fun fact friday so we have david schwartz cto of ripple actively contributes to bitcoin's code base and his first commit was july 25th 2011 awesome and of course if you guys watch all the old ripple videos and them talking about this and going back and forth they support Bitcoin. They like the innovation, but they're looking to enable this legacy technology to work with the new Internet of Value. And right now, trying to make Bitcoin work with that is a little impractical in terms of scalability, in terms of trust. And if they tried to just replace all the moving parts of, say, MoneyGram, that would take forever. They realized, look, this system's complex. We have, you know, 40 year old technology already integrated in the correspondent banking network. Let's just connect these pipes rather than recreate it all together. This is why they are viewed as an enabler, or you could also view them as a disruptor, both being positive, at least in terms of the connotation I'm using. 
All right. And to finish things up right here, guys, so we have Stephen Bolt Diep sharing this. We have, I believe, yep, Brian Madigan of Ripple. This just occurred last week, uh, a couple days ago, really. And we can see XRP solving a problem. We are in a super early stage while it's promising to see huge institutional investors in large Fortune 500 companies putting their treasury into cryptos. This is coming from her, not some idiot like me. Pay attention to this. This means something. I mean, for literally July, banks can custody crypto. You already heard Brian Brooks, acting comptroller of the currency of the United States banking system, saying, in the future, payment networks will interoperate and connect to blockchain payment rails. That's XRP. Among, you know, alongside many others. But if you really are going to discount XRP, I have nothing to say to you. There's just so much more research I encourage you guys to do. And research is not just watching my video. Research is double checking everything I share here and finding different, different, you know, information to expound upon that. So listen up to this and I appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you have a great rest of your day. In general, my recommendation is always a barbell strategy. So for people who are newer coming in, Take a look at a few individual crypto assets, understand their utility, their core value proposition. What problem are they solving? Look at the total addressable market there. For example, in payments because of trapped capital, you know, there's trillions and trillions of dollars of market opportunity that this, that XRP as a digital asset is solving for. Um, and so that's a huge addressable market. So there you would see a driver for value creation. Bitcoin, look at, you know, what market cap of gold, um, look at the market cap of Bitcoin. There's still tons of room, right? But will there be volatility between here and when, you know, we see a top for Bitcoin? Absolutely. And so my general view is we're still in super early stages of this market. While it's very promising to see huge institutional investors and large Fortune 500 companies coming in and putting their treasury cash into Bitcoin, um, and other crypto assets, this is all promising, but there will be short-term volatility in individual coins. And so I would say a barbell strategy is for those who can be patient, um, which many investors will. And I know we in the XRP community are not even phased by the volatility of a project. If XRP goes down, I simply buy more and accumulate more and get more bang for my buck. If we go up, awesome. I'll probably still buy a little bit because if I see the value going to $10 or $100, why wouldn't you unless you found an alternative investment vehicle? All right, stay strong. Understand, we have not seen utility at scale. So giving up if XRP dips is very, very foolish. In my opinion, not financial advice. Please do what is best for you. But I encourage you guys to stay strong. Do not get shaken out by any you know, scary piece of news or by current price. It is all a facade. It is all a distraction. Want and, and look to long-term value creation, put a portion of your allocation in equity, taking stakes in some of the prom most promising companies in the space, and look at you know your seven and ten year returns if you can invest in that type of timeline horizon, um, and then take the other portion of your allocation and pick three, five, whatever is the right number. But um, diversify and and pick a few um, a few crypto assets that you really see a story behind that you understand the value proposition, you understand the problem they're solving, um, because ultimately as you figure out that addressable market, you can back into reasonable valuation. Um, and as I said in my example earlier, taking just a, a 3% exposure um, to the asset class should result in at least a 15% outperformance versus a traditionally managed portfolio.